Okay, so what is a base pointer? Why did they make it? And what was what problem did it solve? And why is today is it nearly obsolete? These are the questions that I hope uh, will become clear by the end of this video. So we're going to go back in time. We're going to go back and um, uh, back. I don't know how many, a few, two or three decades ago. I don't know. Um, we're going to do a little test here, and we're going to kind of look at. Uh, we're going to make like an old-fashioned function. Is what we're going to do. It wasn't even a function back then. It was just a label uh, with some code in it. And we're going to use put some instructions in here. Back then, they they push was kind of a new instruction. Pop was a new instruction. We're going to do a couple push, a push, and a pop. We're going to do a return. So that's. That right there is kind of a simple, old-fashioned function. And up here is the entry point, and we're just going to do call label1. Now, the call, the return, they're kind of, they work together. The stack works with the call and return. The push and the pop work with the stack. We're going to go in the debugger, and we're going to kind of look at what these things are and how they work and how all this got started and this is all going to lead up to why the base pointer was was created so let's go to the debugger and check it out okay so here's our program uh, what we get when we start up is a stack the stack maybe maybe didn't exist at one point in time and then uh, they decided they liked it and they wanted it so they created it and now well, when you start up your program you you get a stack and that and that's kind of nice you know down here in the, in the lower right hand corner is uh, your stack and the RSP is your stack pointer and that's at 14 FF 58 and that's the top considered the top of your stack now I can scroll this window up and I can, uh, there's still memory addresses there, uh, but it's considered kind of out of scope of your stack. So it always seems to line up this window with the top right there. Um, so let's talk about what's going on here. So we're going to do a call. Now what the call is, is a typical way to call a function. Uh, when I step into this, you're going to see that the stack pointer changes. And if you saw that blink, it basically is 8 less. It used to be there at 450, FF58, now it's FF50. So this number that got put on the stack is 12006. And if you look over here, that is the very next line after the call. So that's how, after the function's done, it knows where to jump back to. Uh, very important part there. So if you happen to change that number, by the way, it will jump somewhere else. Uh, so I lost my place. Let's go to uh, I didn't go very far. Uh, okay, so we're going to put dad and rx. There's our function. There's our return. It doesn't do anything but put dad in there. Now we're going to show what a push does. I do a push and the stack pointer changes again. It puts another value on the stack. It put dad on the stack. And then if I do pop, it takes dad off of the stack. Um, the thing to notice here is that each push that you do has to have a pop to match it. If you don't do that, your stack pointer won't be lined up at where it needs to be lined up, which is at 14 FF50. The return needs that address to jump to somewhere. Uh, and that's the key here this whole video is that if by the time you get to re the return, your RSP register is not where it's supposed to be, you've got problems. So we're going to see what happens when it's working properly. The return, I hit 
I step on that, you're going to see that the stack pointer changed and it made that address disappear and it jumped to 12006. Now realistically, I, like I said, I can still look up in here. The number's still there, but we're just not pointing to it anymore. So, um, there we go. And now the last return, I, I guess I did that a little quick there. Um, the operating system, when it runs your program, it's like it's running a function. And you actually do a return, and it returns to your to the operating system code that actually called the function. And we're not going to be looking at that or pretending like we even know anything about that. Um, and that's it. That's our first sample. Let's take a look at another one. I guess before we go to another one, I want to come back into this one and take a look at this again. Let's let's step into this function again. And remember the we went ahead and pushed dad onto the top of the stack there. What I want to do is I want to make it do that line twice. To put two dads on the stack. I can even make it do it again. Let's put three dads on the stack. And then we'll do one pop. So this is an example of if you don't pop as many times as you push, uh, what can happen. So now the stack pointer is not in the right place. And it's going to try to return. It thinks dad's an address. It's going to try to jump to dad, which... gives you an access violation and you're, it's a crash. You're basically, your program just crashed. Uh, so that kind of shows you the problem. That's the why. People were making these assembly programs and they were having lots of bugs dealing with not having the proper amount of pops to match their pushes. Sometimes it's not so obvious. Uh, sometimes you may have a loop running where it pops inside the loop uh, doesn't pop enough, exits a loop, and, and then for various, it works sometimes, doesn't work all the time, but it, it was just a, a, a bad problem of stack problems, things not, the, the address not being at the right spot, and a solution was needed, like, what, like, what are we going to do? So, and that's where someone clever came in, and we're going to go over there. So, somebody clever come up to this and said, okay, well, okay, what if we did this? What if we moved into this RBP register, the value of RSP, at the beginning of the function, and let's set up a situation where we push more times than we pop to create a crash situation. But then at the bottom of the program, you just go ahead and say, I get it, the stack pointer is somewhere off in La La Land, but we kind of saved the original value in RBP at the beginning, and now we're just going to pull that back out, and we're going to fix our problem. Let's see what happens with this change. Okay, here's our program again. Let's go into this. Here's our entry point. Let's go into our function called label one. Now, our new line up here, RSP is 14FF50. That's the address of where our return is at. That's the what RSP needs to be at the bottom in order to make the return happen properly. What we're going to do is we're going to save that or make a copy of it into RBP. There it is. Now we're going to go ahead and run our function and we're going to create more pushes than we do pops. Oh, we would have had a problem, this would have been a crash. But wait, what if we now bring out the original value of RSP and bring it back? Now we're pointing at the right place and we don't crash and out we go. Life is good. Um, and this is better, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, don't even worry about popping now. It's almost like pop is obsolete because you don't need to pop because you just use your data the way you want it. And, um, well, actually, you kind of think you do need to pop because of this little 
rule that you can you gotta you can only take it off the top of the stack. It's like a stack of plates where you can't you can only get the top plate, not the second or third and fourth plate. Which we're gonna if, kind of check that out a little bit here and find out that's not true as well. Uh, so let's go back. Let's go back and change this a little bit. Okay, so this this method worked, but it don't, doesn't work all the time. What we're going to do is we're going to explore a circumstance where this method did not work. It's a, a case where a function calls another function. So let's make another function called label2. And we're going to go ahead and do our little move rbp come rsp trick at the top of that function. And we're going to move, our function is going to be a little different. It's going to move into rax. I go X, move into RX. Um, let's do a, just a different value here. Ugh, ugh. Struggling here. I'm trying to think ahead and it's not doing so well. So we're going to move cab into RX. There's our function. Um, let's do a couple pushes. Let's do one pop. By the way, you could do pop RBX too. Um, if you wanted to put it in a different register, just FYI. And at the bottom, we're going to go move. We got our pushes and pops wrong. It's okay. We got our saved R. We got our saved RSP values. So we're going to we're going to we're going to be good. Now that function would run with no problem, and this function runs with no problem, unless somebody tried to call this function from within that function. Let's kind of walk through that and see what that's going to do. Okay, here we are. Let's, we're at our entry point. Let's go in and do our first function here. Uh, our return is at FF50. We save that to RBP. Fantastic. We do a, we do a couple pushes and all of a sudden we decide we want to call a function from within a function. So let's go to that function. Now notice that the stack down here added another return address on there. FF38. So the stack is growing. Now we're going to do our same little trick where we save the stack pointer into RBP. And we go ahead and we're going to do a couple pushes. And we're going to do a pop, mismatching. And it's okay because we can pull our RSP value out of RBP. And it sets us back up to our return. Fantastic. Let's go back. Now we're back to the first function. Uh, we got two dads pushed. We pop only one of the dads. Okay, that's okay if you don't pop as many because we got RBP saved. Um, the problem is, is that it's not the value it used to be just a second ago. It's the value the other function used, which is going to create problems here. So now RSP gets changed up here to the return that it was from the inner function. And what's that going to do? That's going to make it jump back to that point. You just change the return from label 1 back to the return from where label 2 was. So now, it, now no error happened, which is not good. The program is still running. And we're going to pop another variable. Hey, look, we're going to go ahead and adjust the stack return again and it gets set back to the same point and then we do a return and we return to the same point again and what we are in we're in an infinite loop and this is where your program will just hang and just do nothing just an infinite loop uh, which is just as bad as a crash and it's not good so uh, our little trick for fixing the, the RSP problem 
uh, only works for if just one function level, not, not a function that calls a function. But, fantastic, there's clever people out there that know how to fix this variation of the problem. And the fix for that is going to be at the top of your function, just push RBP onto the stack. Let's go ahead and make some space here. So these, whoops, these two lines and this line down here, and we're going to add a line down here, so we're going to go pop. RBP. So your your function lines are in the middle here, and the top two lines are kind of over function overhead. Uh, the bottom two lines are function overhead. Uh, that has to do with the base pointer, and we're going to put those in here too. Push RBP. And when they got these working, and this is going to work, by the way. Usually when people get things working, they're so happy with what they have, they name them. So I think they got called epilogue and prologue. Fancy names. Uh, one, is, one is the top, one is the bottom. I'm going to guess epilogue's the top two and prologue's the bottom two. Uh, I'm not much of a person on naming things, so... Um, let's see, let's, let's run this, let's see what we got, yeah. That's the best way to, to watch and learn and see how it works, just, just to do it. Okay, here we go. Let's step into the first one. All right, so RSP is FF50 again, and there's our return, 12006 again. This time we're going to push RBP on the stack. Now what that was is zeros because RBP is zeros. Um, I could have put something in there. I didn't. But normally there's an important address there. Just not on the startup function I guess. Not your very first function. Uh, so, okay, now we're going to save the stack pointer in RBP. Okay, that was that trick. And now we're going to start doing our function, and we're going to do a couple pushes. We decided to call another function. Okay, now we get in the other function. It does the same save, pushing RBP. This is, where, this is the RBP that we don't want to lose from the first function. So when that runs, that pushes that onto the stack. And now we're going to go ahead and save our stack pointer. Now you might say, well, the stack pointer is not in the right space. Well, that's because this pop is underneath this move down here. There's our last bottom move, and the pop's underneath it. So if you, if you put it in the right space, it, it works out. Um, so let's go ahead and do just a couple pushes with just one pop. All right, so our stack pointer is off. We didn't pop the right number of times. And here's our fix. Let's go ahead and fix the stack pointer. Perfect. All right, so it is one off. It's, uh, but this pop right here, popping RBP, is going to bring in the old base pointer from the previous function. And now we're pointed at our return address. See, it worked out. We go ahead and do our return. And now the RBP register is set where we want it. We go ahead and uh, um, reset the RSP to where, we, to where it's supposed to be. There's all the zeros from the original RBP. We go ahead and pop those into the register. And we go ahead and return. And we're back to the entry point, And the program's done. Fantastic. And the world turns. And there's the answer is to... So the problem was pushing and popping the right number of times. The solution was the base pointer on all your function calls. All it adds is a little bit overhead to every function. Two lines at the top, two lines at the bottom, and the world turns. Now, <clears throat> we're going to do another example here. This is 
Let's get rid of this one. Uh, so as the world matured and people um, started writing more assembler, assembly, and uh, they realized that you don't need to push and pop at all. There's other ways to do it. So we're going to leave our front top two and bottom two lines there. And I think I'll start a line right here. So let's say we have some values here. We're just going to do a series of values. Now, granted, I know that back in those days they didn't have all these all these extra registers to deal with. So uh, they, they, this is um, kind of a historical view of how they did things, but with a 64-bit operating system with 64-bit registers. Um, so uh, we, we have registers that they don't have. So let's go ahead and put five values in here in five registers. And let's go ahead and push our 11, push our 12, push our 13, push I know I said that pushes are obsolete, but uh, this example is going to do some pushing. Because sometimes pushing is a little easier, easier to think about. You don't have to do any math. All right, so we're going to push those push those five values on the stack. Now, I don't think I want these down here. Okay. Now, you can do an assembly, what's called a memory address calculation. And the brackets mean that you're going to do a formula. And these formulas are actually very simple. They, they can't really uh, do a lot of terms in them. Um, I think a maximum of three terms. Uh, we're going to do take the RBP register value and subtract 8 from it. And whatever's in that 8-byte slot, put in Rx. We can literally move anything we want from anywhere we want to anything we want. So the whole idea of you, like if you want to access a second variable on the stack, you got to pop off the first variable to get to it. Not true. Uh, you can access any variable you want from any, anything you want. In fact, you can access things anywhere on the stack. Um, not even on your stack. Not a very nice thing to do, but it's possible. Um, okay. Let's go to the debugger and watch that. So we're pushing five values in the stack, and we're going to pull off five values off the stack. Okay, here's our program. Let's step into our first function here. Uh, we do our top two lines of function overhead set up to base pointer. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and put in the R11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, the numbers 1 through 5. You can see them over there. And now we're going to push all those values from onto the stack. And you can see them now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over there in the bottom right. Now, we can pull any of those numbers we, uh, we want out and put them in Rx. For example, there's 1, there's 2, and notice that they're not disappearing. I'm just reading from the stack using a memory address calculation. There's three, four, and five. So that is what I mean by popping is obsolete. Not only do you not have to get the right number of pops, you don't have to pop at all. To access your data, you can access the data. As long as you know what the offsets are from RBP, you can access any of your data. And then at the bottom, uh, it's just going to 
fix the RSP pointer to its original location and return and return in the, in the and it's over with. Fantastic and the world moves on. Okay so this line here with this push I want to show you that the push became obsolete as well because you can do something like this. Right, right there does the same thing as that push. Um, so again, as long as you know your offsets are from relative to RBP, uh, you can read and write anything you want to and from the stack. No pushes or pops at all. Okay, so we're going to kind of delete this, delete this, and we're going to do another example now. So the world moved on and people started realizing that you don't need the base pointer register at all. And what we're going to do is an example of why you don't need it. And you don't need this. In fact, let's. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so what we can do is. You know that example I just told you about, about you don't need to push? Okay, I should have ran that through because I, um, that wasn't exactly correct. If you don't adjust the stack pointer, you're out of, it, it'll work in that function, but if you go calling other functions, you're going to we'll be overwriting your data, you have a problem. So that, that was kind of a bad example. Let's, let's just almost forget what I did just a second ago and let's just go forward here. Uh, you, you need to manually adjust your stack pointer. What we're going to do is we're going to do it uh, 28. Um, 28 is uh, 5 eighths. You should go to 8, 1 0, 1 8, 2 0, 2 8. There's five of them. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to. We're going to do everything relative to the RSP pointer. We're not going to use the base pointer because our base pointer is open. It's nothing. It's random. It's going to use it for something else. We're not using the base pointer anymore. So we can put R15 in there. And we're doing it as the top one. And we're going to do plus 8. R14. I'm going to move RSP plus. That's 16, by the way, in hex. So R13. I'm going to move RSP plus 0 by 18. R12. Move RSP plus. by 20, 11, RSP plus, oh, that's all I got, um, let's do an example here, I'm pulling a number out, putting it RX, Pull out that number if we want. We can pull out the second number. You can read right to them any way you want as long as you know what your offsets are. And down here at the bottom, when you're done, you just gotta fix 
RSP back to where it was. So if you subtracted 28 up there, you have to add 28 down here. It's different. It's different. It's it's a, a no base painter base pointer world existence. Just using the stack pointer at this point. Okay, let's watch this one run. Here's your entry point. Let's go to our function. There we've got some data. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, now we're going to adjust our stack pointer, subtracting 28. You see in one single step, you just declare all the space you want. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, do some moves. We're going to put some of our values into our space. And then maybe we're going to pull one out. We'll work with it. We'll pull another one out. Uh, we'll run our function. We'll end up returning dad. Uh, and at the very bottom, you just... We subtracted 28, we're going to now add 28, and our stack is right at the point where it needs to be to do the proper return, and fantastic life is good and the world turns. Okay, maybe life isn't so great because you're trying to write these programs and you got to keep remembering, maybe you jot down on a piece of paper. Uh, your variables and what their offsets are and you know maybe maybe there's an easier way maybe there's an easier way so let's uh let's get rid of this let's let's now instead of just calling labels let's call it a function this is how compilers are evolving. We won't be doing any parameters in this video. We're, we're keeping it simple. Okay, that glitch right there is quite annoying. At the end of your function, you don't return, you do an end function, and the compiler will in the background just issue a return. Okay, now now you have the capability of declaring variables. Let's say you have A, and you want to set it equal to 1. Now DQ is a variable type. DQ means 8 byte. Let's say you have B equals 2. C equals 3. D equals 4. E equals 5. Okay, now let's say you want to put A, B, C, D, E into your registers, which is the same values. And let's say at the end you want to return dad. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to go in and we're going to take a look and see what that looks like. See what the compiler creates. Okay, here we go. Let's go in here and here's our entry point, here's our function. First thing we see is subtract RSP comma 30. Look familiar? Uh, now we're going to move the number 5 into, we're going to use a temporary register, and we're, mostly because there's no CPU instruction available to move 8 bytes into in the memory. Uh, so it's a it's a two-step. We run those, and you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fills up. And then we can go ahead and move them into our registers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can move dad into REX. And then at the bottom, we just adjust RSP, and off we go. So, now that is like way better. You don't have to remember your offsets. You don't have to, you, you get variables. You don't have to worry about pushing and popping. So pushing and popping is obsolete. And, and the base pointer is not used. 
And not only that, you've got two lines of assembly at the bottom and top of every single function that aren't, that aren't there anymore, and the, everything runs faster. So uh, that's the near death of the base pointer at that point. But let's say, let's kind of delete this. Let's say you're a pusher and a popper, and you like using those instructions that are still sitting there in the books. And let's say you want to do some, you want to push REX, push REX again, and you want to pop REX, and you don't have your pushes to match your pops. Same problem from the beginning. Uh-oh. What's going to happen? Let's go take a look. Okay. Here's our entry point. There's our function. And what do we see at the top? Push RBP. What? What? What just happened here? Um, I thought it's obsolete and, we're not, and we don't use that anymore. Well, this, this compiler looked at your code and said, oh, you're pushing and popping. Uh, that might be a problem. We're going to go ahead and turn back on the base pointer logic. And it put the put those top two lines back in. Uh, it doesn't count your pushes and pops because it, things could be in loops and things could get real complicated and it, it would be very, very difficult to know the right answer maybe even considered impossible. So it basically puts the base pointer logic back in, which saves your stack pointer so that you don't have stack errors, and out you go. Life is good. Well, I don't know what other compilers do. I just know that uh, this most people know about this know about the base pointer then there's optimizations that will get rid of the base pointer I think I think it might be called frame pointer admission FPO um, and I think some compilers have it as a default option I, I really don't know um, and I, I don't know if, if you start pushing popping if it's going to put the base pointer in or not uh, I just don't know what other compilers do to tell you the truth um, but there it is. Um, it's kind of a nice little history lesson. It's kind of cool. The, the, the base pointer was built to solve a problem. Uh, now it's become the problem became obsolete. There's other ways to do it. Um, compilers came around and um, now optimize it out. And uh, it's just kind of history. It's just kind of cool. But that's why it's there. That's what it was for. And thanks for watching the video. See you later.